Hello, Clutterbugs. Right off the bat, I had to pin Mouse Nation's comment here. Oh my gosh, you know what? I forgot to bring my mic down. I had to pin, I had to pin your comment, Mouse comment, because it's like war paint check, trash bags check, broom check. Now load me up with the tough love cast. I'm here. That's exactly what I'm going to do today as soon as I get everything situated and right, because tech is hard for me. I'm going to... I'm going to give you some tough love. I'm going to show you how to fight for your home. I'm going to give you tons of motivation to borrow, but also practical things that you can do today, right now, to start winning the war against your home. Because the truth is, you're in a battle. If every day you are feeling like it's a disaster and you can't get on top of it, or you clean and it just gets messy again, and you're so sick of the cycle, and you're like, why bother? I'm I'm just over it. I don't care about the piles of laundry and the dirty dishes and the mess. I just want to close my eyes and pretend it's not there, and maybe I'll clean it if company's coming over. You deserve better than that. Stop it. You deserve so much better than that. And the solution here isn't you working harder that you're not trying enough. This isn't because you're not putting in enough effort. It's because you're not taking the steps that you need to do. You're not doing it right, friends, okay? And I know this because I've been there and I found the hacks and the tricks and the solutions to like, to like be the boss of this house and make it feel so much easier. Is my house perfect? Absolutely freaking not. But I can get it clean pretty fast now. It doesn't feel like a battle anymore. It's just now like a nagging chore that I sometimes have to do. And I want this for you. You're never going to be totally caught up on laundry. That's a lie. You're never going to have a house that's tidy 24 seven. Totally a huge lie, especially if you have anyone else living with you, but you can have a place where you're literally proud of yourself and proud of your home. And to get it to a point where it's company ready is like, 20 minutes. You can have that every single day without having to bust your butt and work like a dog. Okay. Cause I'm going to teach you how to fight for that because you deserve that. I love all you guys. Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. And let me know if you can, if you can see me. I just want to know that you're not alone. And if this is the, I'm going to be, I'm just going to give you real truth here because I feel like sometimes we're all dancing around the issue and, and trying to like make everybody feel better. But the truth is it's easier to be like to stay caught up than it is to catch up. So if you've let things go for weeks or months or years, the idea that five minutes a day is going to get you there is a lie you're going to have to catch up and that sucks and it's hard work, but I'm going to show you how to make it easier. And, and you're not going to feel motivated every day because motivation is another lie. You're not going to feel it. You can borrow motivation from others. You can watch other people and like externally feel motivated for a short amount of time, but real internal motivation. Here's what I believe. And maybe I'm bonk -a donks crazy, but I believe that real motivation comes from self pride, from feeling good, from feeling proud and wanting to like get results and knowing, being confident that you have the ability to, to do this and that it isn't going to take forever. And it's not a big, like motivation comes from like, I'm going to get this done and this is going to feel good. Real like self love, self pride, that that's self motivation. That's how you feel motivated. And if you're not feeling that way right now, if you look at your house and think, I'm so bad at managing, I'm bad at organizing, I'm messy, everything's a disaster, it's going to take forever, my kids are just going to make it a mess again, you are never going to feel motivation. You might feel external motivation because <laughs> like your mother-in-law is coming over or something, or like you might feel rage motivation, which is just you cannot take it anymore. So you're just like, I'm going to burn it all to the ground. I'm just like, ah, going to do something. But, but real motivation, like the want and desire to do your dishes every day, that's a whole different ballgame. 
and I'm going to show you how to get there and I'm going to show you how to fight. But also at the end, I'm going to answer your question. So if you have like real questions about yourself and your situation and your home, like Cass, this is what I'm dealing with. How can I get there? I'm going to try to help. I'm not an expert. And, and so maybe I can help and maybe I can't, but I can be really honest with you. That's what I can do today. I can give you some tough love and some hard truths and some motivation to get where you want to be, but you've got roadblocks in the way. So let's kick them down. Okay. Let me know in the comments if you, if you need to catch up or if you're just like, because you're way behind when it comes to your house. Like it's like, it's, it's, it's days, it's weeks, it's months worth of work you're looking at. Or you just need that daily, like, you know, motivation to just keep up. If, are you catching up or are you keeping up? Let me know in the comments right off the bat because there's different techniques for both of those things. All right. Way behind. Way behind. Mouse Nation, you're way behind. Okay. Way behind. So here's what we can do. All of you who are like, you're freaking way behind. You got to catch up. We got to take shortcuts. And the biggest shortcut, and don't stop, don't roll your eyes. Mouse Nation, I know you're going to roll your eyes. The biggest way to make a big difference, if you do your dishes today, you're just going to have to do your dishes again tomorrow. It's important, but it's not moving the needle forward. If you make your bed, cool, 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 until you go to bed tonight, and then you're exactly back where you were. So that is effort that you're expelling, right? You're, you're putting forth this effort and not seeing long lasting results. That's not going to catch you up. Doing your laundry, maybe you'll do all the laundry. You won't have one piece of dirty clothes, except you're never caught up because you're wearing clothes. So that isn't pushing the needle forward. That's keep up stuff. That's not catch up stuff. And when we have to catch up, we have to take shortcuts with all that other keep up crap. And we need to do really drastic, moving the needle forward things in order to get there. So then we can just keep up because otherwise you're just on a, you're just on a wheel. You're just on a hamster wheel of never ending work, work. And the more you put it off, the more work you have, the more we want to put it off. And the more we put it off, the more work we have. And it's this horrible, suffocating cycle. And you can work all day to do the dishes and the laundry. And, and, then, and then two days from now, you're right back where you started and you feel defeated. And so we're going we're gonna to do something different here. Here is how you catch up. Guys, listen. You have way less freaking stuff. Way, way less stuff. That's step one. And I talk about this all the time, but listen to me. This is a battle. This is a war that you're fighting with your home. And you're never going to win it if there aren't casualties. And maybe you spent money on that stuff. And maybe you're so scared you're going to have to buy it again or need it again. Or what if you make a mistake? Or what if you feel like guilt and regret? You're at war. And you need to be ruthless so you stop feeling this way every single day. Because as hard as it is, as hard as it feels to declutter, that's number one. It feels a whole lot worse for you to feel so bad about yourself in a home that you can never feel like you're on top of. You wake up in the morning and everything you see is to-dos. You feel like a failure. Your towels are stained. Your every there's piles everywhere. Things are dirty. You're just like, what the freaking heck is wrong with me? And you deserve better than that. And I, and that 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 would like the decluttering process is so much about self love because this is the time where you put yourself first and say, I am more important than the junk. And I know we talked about this last time, but I'm going to keep saying it until you really feel it. I want you to look around yourself, look around at something, something in the distance. You can throw that in the garbage, that throw pillow, that plant, that picture frame of your grandkids. I don't care. You can throw that in the garbage. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do, but if you do, it's not a big deal because at the end of the day, the only thing in your home that matters is you and your family. 
And why is it so hard to put yourself first and your happiness first? Why are we letting physical crap that we probably bought at Amazon or Walmart that was probably made in China and it's absolute junk bully us, belittle us, and control us in our home? Because everything we own is like work. It's just, it's work. Sometimes it's cool stuff that like improves our lives and we actually enjoy using it. But most of it, is just now stuff that we're storing. And everything we're storing that we're not using is like taking from us. And we say, look it, look it, here's what I'm gonna say, but I might need it. If you haven't needed it in the last six months or a year, here's what I want you to ask yourself. What's the worst thing that could happen if you needed that thing and you didn't have it. So like, this is the thing we say, but I might need it. What is it? Is it a tent? You haven't gone camping. What if somebody says, hey, you want to go camping with me? And you're like, crap, I decluttered that tent. What's the worst thing? The worst thing. And it isn't go buy a tent. Can you borrow a tent from somebody? Oh, yeah, I could totally borrow a tent from my friend or my mom or my neighbor. And suddenly it's not a big deal at all that you decluttered that tent. And I'm not even suggesting you declutter a tent because the tent is not the problem. The problem is all the crap in your closets and your cabinets and your drawers. It's paperwork from 15 years ago. It's dishes you never use. It's soup pots and rice cookers and bread makers and all the crap in your kitchen. You have no place to put things because your drawers and closets and cabinets are filled with crap that you're not using. Old blankets, old towels, old sheet sets, random boxes, doom boxes filled with absolute garbage. And now everything is harder. It's harder for you to cook. It's harder for you to find things. It's harder for you to put things away. It's raining outside. Where are your rubber boots? Where are they? They're under a pile of other shoes and everything's crazy. You need the umbrella. Holy freaking crap. I hope you can find it. Right. And this, I know this because I've felt this and the way to get out is to grab a trash bag and just hunt. We're not pulling things out. We're not making piles. We're like, what am I better than? What in this house is not serving me? Everything you own should serve you. You are in charge of it. You are the boss. It is only there to work for you. If it isn't do giving to you, if it isn't like literally just providing for you, it's worthless junk that needs to leave. So that's step one. <coughs> I'm on, I'm on, a, I'm on a tear already. I'm like, don't lose your voice with the screaming. Um, yeah. Do I follow the 20 minutes, 20 rebuy rule? So perfectionists are always like, like, what's the decluttering rule? And I do say if I, a lot of people, when I'm helping perfectionists, I say, listen, if you can buy this again for under $20 and you're not sure you need it right now, you're like, eh, I don't actually use it. And it's less than $20 to replace. Don't even think about it. It's gone. But what I really want you to do is let go, I know I'm going to say this, this is going to be crazy, but literally let go of all the freaking rules. Just stop having rules. And I've told you rules in the past, but today I don't want you to have a rule. I want you to trust yourself, your gut, not your overthinking anxiety brain and your fears, your gut. Pick something up. This is an iPad. Instantly, I'm like, of course I'm keeping this. Of course I'm keeping this. If I pick something else up, what am I going to pick up? Okay, here we go. This is what my brain says. <sighs> One of these remotes is for a fireplace I own, and I'm not sure what the other remote is for. And so I feel a lot of anxiety because what if I do the wrong one and I make a mistake and I get rid of the wrong remote and oh my gosh, so I'm going to toss it back in the drawer, which is valuable real estate here. Or I can immediately go take action and see if this is remote for the fireplace that's right there. And the other one, I can put it in a time will tell box. That's what Dawn from the Minimal Mom calls it. But I can have a box with like, I'm not 100% sure, but it's not going back in my drawer. 
because now I can't find a pen or anything else because I have too much stuff in this drawer. So I can put this in a, in a, in a place where it's like, if, if in a year from now, I haven't needed something. I have one place in my home, one bin for like, I don't freaking know, but put it in the garage or the shed or the basement or the attic, put it somewhere else. And then, and then a year from now you put on the outside. If I haven't needed anything in this box by uh, September, 2024, I can donate the whole thing without even opening it. That feels like less stressful. So that's a that's a way that we can kind of dip our toe in this decluttering water without feeling all the anxiety. I don't know which room to start. Okay, let's <laughs> let's let's really talk about this because man, okay, more truths are just going to come out. If you're living in a chaotic messy, cluttered home, you're not prioritizing yourself. You're not. Your mindset is not, I am a queen and I deserve a castle. You deserve a home that you're proud of. You deserve that. And you don't feel that right now. You, you, you maybe want to buy things to maybe make life easier, but do you really, is it a priority to you? Do you know that you deserve that and you are capable of it and you can get there and it doesn't have to be hard? Do you believe in yourself? Do you really believe in yourself? And the answer is probably no. So what I suggest, if you honestly don't know where to start, and I know this is weird, a lot of people say that this isn't a place to start, but your bedroom is yours. Company doesn't see it. It's yours. Maybe your spouse. Fine. <laughs> okay, fine. But imagine if, I don't care if the rest of your house is a disaster, please make your bedroom a nurturing, comforting nest to catch you at the end of a long day. A place where you're feeling overwhelmed that you can go and think, feels good. So when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you see is nothing that needs to be done. And the last thing you see when you go to bed is no work to be done. So if you start in the bedroom and you start with the bullies, you start in your closet. If something doesn't fit you, if something looks bad on you, if there are shoes that pinch your feet or high heels that just remind you that you're getting old and you can't wear high heels anymore because they hurt your feet so bad, but you look at them and think, oh, when I was younger, I wore those. That's not making you feel good. That's like now you're an old and you can't wear high heels and that's sadness clothes that are telling you that you're fat and you need to work out and you need to lose weight are mean horrible, toxic bullies. Why are they in your bedroom? Why are they in your house? But why are they in your bedroom? Why is that the first message you're telling yourself every day when you wake up? So if I'm thinking you start anywhere, you start in the room that's just for you because you are the most important thing. You are more important. This, this is going to sound terrible. You are more important than your children. Your happiness is more important than your children's happiness. Your happiness is more important than your spouse's happiness. I want you to be so selfish because when you really freaking love yourself and you put yourself first, you're going to have more to give to everyone else. And everyone's going to be happier because you are the leader of your home. You are the boss and you need to be confident and self-assured and love yourself. And so do it for you. And I don't care about your circumstances and maybe you need to paint and your house is hideous and, 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 and whatever. I can't stand my bedroom and the wallpaper, but I, I, I will not allow myself to have random clutter around. The rest of the house sometimes gets bad, but the bedroom is my sanctuary and clean is beautiful. And it's easy to keep it clean when we don't have the excess crap. Makeup that you've bought that you don't like and it's not your color, if, if you have a bathroom that's attached, buy. Goodbye. Things in your bedroom that are not like making you feel cozy, boxes of things you want to deal with or clutter or get it out, put it in the living room. I don't care. I don't care. Your bedroom 
is yours because you deserve it. And this is the mindset shift we need to make to get the home we need because it feels impossible to declutter when you don't trust yourself to make the decisions, when you're insecure and you're worried and you're stressed about making a mistake and you feel like a failure and just all these negative self-talk things you're telling yourself and maybe your parents told you these things or your spouse told you these things and and so you're feeling weak and small and not strong and not brave and so you're not making real progress to catch up and so today i want you to practice being fierce and throwing things in the trash and there are probably a million better things you could do with them. And if you have the capacity to, to drop things off a donation or recycle things properly, then do it. But if the idea of one more extra step feels like too much, put it in the trash because that is love for yourself. You are more important than the earth. You're more important than the people at the donation center. You're number one, your top dog. You put yourself first. You love the freaking crap out of yourself because it's time to make your life easier because you deserve less work. And we got to work to get a less work. It's an investment in ourselves, but we can take shortcuts. You don't have to spend all day cleaning your bedroom. You can spend a half an hour and fill 10 trash bags of crap that's bullying you and get there. Get there. Okay. Oh, Linda. Yes, Linda. I am. I'm so glad that's, that's, that's music to my ears because this is how we start building that confidence and that self-love is starting in a place that's just ours. A bedroom is a dumping ground and it should not be a dumping ground. We keep it a dumping ground because company doesn't see it. And so we don't want other people to like know our dirty secret or we don't want to be embarrassed, but then we put it all on ourselves, our private, like a little private, horrible, embarrassing secret. And you deserve better than that. I really want you to put yourself first. And why does this feel so hard? Why does this feel so selfish? Why does this feel like, I don't know. I, that's it. What if, what if, I don't know where you live in the country, what if all the paper just left? What if you just called a shredding company and shredded it? Or if you live in the country, what if you just burned it? And you can do what I call the 10 second countdown. So if you have a box of doom or a box of paper, you open it up and count down from 10 while looking 10, 9, 8, seven, six, you're looking for passports, birth certificates. Is there anything really important in here? Because bank statements, all that stuff you can get again, paid bills, you do not need it. You do not need any of that in your house. My poor grandmother, when she was moving, she packed up all of her paperwork into trash bags. It all got burned at my mom's. Her death, her husband's death certificate, her marriage certificate, all of these important documents gone. She just, yeah, it was a pain, but she called and got them all replaced. And it was a pain in her butt. I'm not saying it wasn't a pain, but it wasn't the end of the world. This isn't a life or death fight here. What is a life or death fight is your self-love and your self-esteem, your happiness. That is more important than all the paperwork in the world. You are the most important thing. And your family is second. And if boxes and boxes and boxes of paper are stressing you out and making you miserable, burn them. It's drastic. I know it's drastic. What if I need something? What, what if I need something? So we're doing the 10 second countdown when you're going through. The only thing that's really important that you're going to need, you're going to need the deed to your house, which you can get another copy of if you needed to. You're going to have like important wills and power of attorneys, which you could get another copy of if you needed to. If your house burned down tomorrow and you lost everything, you could replace all those important documents, all of them. Pictures, important things like that. We're not going to throw those out. Those are special, but like uh, an electricity bill, a, a gas bill, a bank statement, a credit card statement, random junk mail. What? None of that matters. 
we have to keep our taxes, the things we've used for taxes for seven years, even those, and I'm not suggesting you just burn everything to the ground, but even those is not the end of the world. We put so much importance on all this trivial external stuff and no importance on ourselves and how that stuff makes us feel. Why? That's what I want to talk to when it comes to fighting for your home. It isn't about the little things. It's about the fact that you, do you trust yourself to know what's important and what's not? If the answer is no, that's a problem. And how do you trust yourself? You're scared and you're doing it anyways. You're like, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I don't need this. And then we walk down, what's the worst thing that could happen if I let this go and I do need this again? Do I call the bank and get a replacement? Okay, that's not so bad. Okay, that's not so bad. Brenda, so don't start with taxes. Don't, don't even start with paper. Here's what we can start with. Extra mugs, extra appliances in your kitchen that you never use, clothes that don't fit. When everything in your house, you look and you think this is all important, nothing's important. And the only way to dig yourself out is to go through, take the unimportant things. You're like, yeah, this is unimportant and put it in a trash bag because it's gone forever. And guess what? Tomorrow, you don't have to declutter that again. That's how we catch up. We get things out of our house. And if something you're unsure of, skip it. Go to the next thing. Keep finding things that you can confidently get rid of your house. And just like peeling off layers of an onion, you're going to repeat this until you get to a point where you're like, hey, my house feels easier. It feels easier. That's how we catch up. That's how we fight. We literally fill trash bags and we fill boxes. We don't go buy organizing solutions. More totes and more shelving is not going to help you when every day is a battle just to feel good about your home. Buying things is not going to solve the problems. Being brave enough to say, the things I know I don't need are leaving is how you get there. And it's hard. Oh my gosh. And craft supplies? <laughs> so hard. It's hard because you identify, this is identity clutter, right? If you're a crafter or you love to read or you love to cook, you see the supplies that go with that as an extension of yourself. And it's also expensive for all of these supplies. So we think, we think, and it's also like, I was going to knit this blanket or I was going to use that to knit this. So it feels like I'm a failure if I let it go because I didn't fulfill that promise to myself. And so now we're looking at this stuff and all we're feeling is bad thoughts. We're looking at this stuff and we're thinking, well, maybe one, and we're lying to ourselves that maybe we'll get around to it one day and we'll be really proud of ourselves that we did it. But in the meantime, for years, while we're looking at that, we feel like failures for not doing it. And here's the real truth. If you were just to put those things in a trash bag, You'd never look at them again. You wouldn't even remember that you had ever owned them. You would never feel those negative thoughts. It would just be gone. And sometimes when we don't love ourselves enough to do this, for us, we don't love ourselves. Can we love someone else enough to give it to them? Craft supplies, yarn, wool, paper products, stickers, stamps, glue, glitter. I'm going to tell you the truth. I worked for five years at a nursing home and there was 300 residents, seniors living in this space. And I was the activity director and I was doing crafts with them and they would knit and they would do like even just coloring on paper brought so much joy, so much joy. And they did not have money for supplies. There was never enough things. If you could pack up all the craft supplies you're not using, if you could pack up all the books you're not reading and give them to a, a nursing home in your area, you're going to be bringing so much joy to people at the end of their lives. And that feels easier, doesn't it? Now it feels like I can let this go because it's going to a good home and that feels good. And what you're feeling is pride. 
you're going to give to someone else and that feels good. And that feeling of, if you don't feel that pride in yourself yet, if the thought of just doing it because you deserve a craft room that's clutter free, if that isn't enough motivation yet, then you can do it for love for someone else because the love for yourself will come. And we can fake that love till we make it, fake it till you make it, because that's what it really comes down to. It, it really comes down to putting yourself first. Okay, so here's some ways that while we're doing this, because it's it's work, it's work to, to do the decluttering and find the things, it's work. So how can you do that and also just manage life? That's so overwhelming. Deborah. yeah so overwhelming. How can you catch up and fight the fight and still, but you still have to make dinner and go grocery shopping and do laundry and, and freaking do the dishes and like just have a shower and go to work every day. How there's not enough time. And then you, you feel like this, this panic, right? We feel like this, uh, I'm never going to be able to do it because something else is going to give. And yeah, I'm over here like decluttering cast, but then the rest of the house is a mess. So Again, I want you to see the difference between the keeping up tasks, which are laundry, dishes, vacuuming, dusting. We're going to have to perpetually do those forever. They will never catch you up because they're not long lasting. Getting things out of your house is long lasting. If you declutter today, it's less to declutter tomorrow. That I call it pushing the needle forward. Everything you remove from your home is making a long lasting difference. You're getting towards a bigger goal and you're not going backwards unless you go on a shopping spree. Then you're going, you're going, you're going, kind of, you're going kind of backwards if you're shopping. But as long as more stuff is leaving than's coming in, you're catching up. So that has to be priority number one. When you're in the fight, when you're drowning, when you're battling your home, catching up is number one priority. But what about the keeping up stuff? This is where we take shortcuts. Use paper plates. Cheat. You know, don't fold your clothes. Who cares? Throw them in the drawer, but leave them in the basket and tuck them in your closet. Just, just, I don't care. If you saw my closet, half of my clothes are like inside out. Nothing's really folded, but it's a way. And it isn't clutter and it isn't mess. And I always have clean clothes and my family always has clean clothes and it isn't perfect because I don't have the ability to right now in my life, in this phase, to give everything a hundred percent. I don't have it. So I have to do things crappy. I have to take shortcuts. And, and sometimes we have paper plates night when I'm really busy and that's okay. Take a shortcut. Here's another shortcut. If you have kids, toy rotation. Pack up half of your kids' toys and put them somewhere hidden so it's less toys to clean up. Do the pack-up method of anywhere in your house. Cosplay as a minimalist. Get some boxes, pack a bunch of stuff up, label them like you're moving, and just store them somewhere in your house. Take a break. Give yourself less to manage so that you any like free time or any like breathing space in your day that you do have, you can focus on getting forward, catching up in life, fill a trash bag, drop off donations, go through, you know what, all those old blankets and towels, you're human. If you can't love yourself enough to throw them in the trash or drop them off at Goodwill, drop them off at the Humane Society because there's puppies and kittens and they're always like your Humane Society is always looking for things like that to bring comfort to those pets to give a soft bed to an animal that's in a cage. Now, why? Tell me why. The thought of that, dropping off those old towels that you're not using, those old sheets up, those old blankets, removing them and gifting them to a, an animal you've never met feels so much better than gifting yourself a closet that's not stuffed. I think it should be equal. You should feel equal joy and happiness at the thought of giving yourself a space that's beautiful and easy to manage. 
you, and if you don't, you're not there yet, but we're going to practice getting there because that's what managing your home is all about. That's what, that's what having a home that doesn't have excess is about. It's about self-love and self-esteem. And like, yes, I deserve this. And that feels so hard. I get emotional. I get so emotional when, when I even say it to myself, like, I, I, I don't know why we think that we can do these things for external people, then it's fine. But if we're doing it for ourselves, that doesn't feel right for some reason. We got to practice on that and we have to work on that. We have to work on being more selfish because being a selfish person isn't a bad thing when we're catching up. Because once we've caught up, we're going to have time and the capacity to do things like volunteer and give back and do small things to bring other people joy and to do those crafts and to knit those sweaters and to make those quilts and to, you know, paint with our children and to have coffee with our friends. We're, we're not doing any of these things because we're spending our time managing our mess and we're spending our time living in this cycle of despair of I shouldn't be doing these fun things. I should be cleaning and I should be doing these to do's and it's toxic and it's nasty. And the only way to give get out is to love yourself out. And then we can do things right and better and perfect. And then we can put the oxygen mask on the people beside us because we are thriving in our lives. You can take care of no one else if you can't take care of yourself first. You are number one. So you have the ability to be there for other people. Build yourself up so you can lift up everyone else around you. And, and I know it feels like, I think like, especially as women, it's really hard. It's really hard for us to put ourselves first. Oh my gosh. I just saw this comment. Moving a bunch of stuff into a storage unit is a waste of money. Do not get a storage unit. Preach it. When I say pack it up, I, I never want you to rent a storage unit. If you don't have space in your home for those things, we're just taking it straight to Goodwill. You're not spending money to store things that you are too afraid to let go of because you don't love yourself enough to trust yourself. You are not paying money for that. You are being fierce warriors. You are fighting for your home and yourself and your pride. And you are being okay with just getting stuff out. Even if you make a mistake, even if there's a casualty, you're worth more. And, and you can say, well, I don't really have the money to replace it. And what if I make, and you don't understand, and I don't have the same money. You're worth more than all the money. I don't care. You can borrow things from a friend. Stop making excuses because the truth is you're afraid to make a mistake and you're afraid to trust yourself. You're afraid to put yourself first. Are you afraid? maybe even to succeed. You deserve it. And I want you to say that out loud. So let's look at shortcuts. Okay. Cheating, paper plates. <laughs> Who cares? Toy rotation. Totally. Do the pack up method. It, it, just how can we not do all this other stuff? Perfect. Can we ask for help? Can you call your sister or your mom or your best friend and say like, listen, I'm drowning over here. Please, can you come over and just spend time with me while I clean my kitchen and I catch up? I need you. They're 100% going to be there and be happy that you asked because everybody has felt this way. Everybody has felt like they're drowning and everybody needs help sometimes. Okay. I'm going to get to some of your questions because I'm ranting like a crazy person. Jeepers. Crap. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Beth says, we are human. It's normal to fear the unknown. But when the known is crappy, embrace the fear and try something new. God, I couldn't even say it this good, Beth, if I tried. It's true. We as humans, like, we're so afraid of change that we don't want to try it. We just want to like stay in our little thing, doing the things that we're doing over and over again, but we hate the results that we're getting. And we're so afraid to try something new, but 
but the, what we're doing is adding up to misery and self-hate and feeling like a failure and just being unhappy and unmotivated because at the end of the day, you're not feeling proud of yourself. And so how do we feel proud of ourselves? We set tiny goals and we parent ourselves and we put on our big girl pants and we do those goals. Today, you can fill one trash bag, one, and then celebrate the crap out of that because you've pushed the needle forward. Tomorrow, guess what? You have one trash bag less of stuff in your house. A week from now, you have one trash bag less of, this isn't going back. This isn't something that you're doing that you're gonna have to do over and over again. You have made a difference. You have achieved a goal that is not gonna be wiped out and you're gonna have to do over again. You will have to fill another trash bag. Yes, but it will be totally different stuff. And you're closer and you're closer and you're closer. Celebrate that. That's how you catch up. That's how you fight. That's how you win the war. You are brave. Celebrate your bravery. Load up a box of donations in your car and drive it there. Pride. And the amazing thing is this becomes very addicting because we often in our lives don't do things that make us feel proud. We, we feel like we're going through life and kind of going through the motions, but are you proud of yourself? Lisa says, you have chronic fatigue and trying to keep up on simple things is exhausting. Options? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of the spoon theory, right? You only have so many spoons in your day. You can Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about, but take shortcuts. Take shortcuts. Don't fold. Use paper plates. And do things that are lasting goals. Decluttering is it. With chronic fatigue, you don't have the capacity. You can have less stuff than the average person because you have less capacity to manage a lot of stuff. You can't be stuff shuffling and looking around. You can't have 20 pairs of shoes. You need to simplify your life for your health and your happiness and your peace of mind. And so you can take five minutes a day and find four things to go. And then just put them in a bag and put them by your door. And the next time you leave the house, put them in your trunk. Small steps to push the needle forward. Not the little keeping up tasks, which are already exhausting, which are important. And I'm going to talk about that in one second, how we can simplify those things to make life easier. But how can you push the needle forward? Okay. Um, if you have a question, if you put like the question mark, it's helpful for me to see it. Pray, love, homeschool. Homeschool cricket mom drowning in a house of butterflies. Paper craft games, books, toys, help. So just like you, like, so I work from home and I used to work out of a space that was a shared space and I never felt like, it felt like every day was always work. And as a homeschool mom, where's your homeschooling space? Maybe you don't have a dedicated room and that's okay. Is it a wall in your dining room? Is it a section of the playroom? Is it a section in the living room? That's where it is. You've zoned that for homeschool and you ruthlessly don't let things come out of that space because kids have to be able to go to school. You as a teacher have to be able to go to school and then step away and come home and have it separated. And homeschooling is great because you're in your home, but you still need that separation so that everywhere you look isn't work for you. You don't want to live at the school as a teacher. And so I would recommend zoning a place in your home for homeschooling supplies and it stays right there and it can't go anywhere else because you deserve it. Um, okay. I'm going to answer your questions. MB, what do you think about a couple that neglect fishes paring down to only two of everything? Wait, what? What do you think about a couple that neglects fishes paring down to only two of everything? Is it dishes? It's dishes. What do I think about a couple that neglects dishes paring down to only two of everything? Yeah. 
I mean, a lot of minimalists are like, just have less and it forces you to do the dishes. I want to talk about that is that could help. But here's what I would recommend first, which is the three dailies, non-negotiable. You and B are not allowed to go to bed. You are not allowed to go to bed until the dishes are done. The dishwasher has to be loaded and ran, or you have to wash the, the dishes right after dinner before bed. You have to. Maybe you have like a coffee cup or a couple of, that's fine. That can wait till the morning, but you cannot go to bed until your dishes are done. End of story, non-negotiable. It's time to parent yourself. You wouldn't let a kid get away with, with this. You, you, you're the boss of yourself non-negotiable. That's the number one non-negotiable. You are not allowed. And the first day you have to do it, it's going to take hours because you've got uh, like a lot of dishes to catch up on. But the next day it's like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Big deal. You can do that. You have to do that. It's a non-negotiable. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care if you're puking your brains out. I don't care if you have a fever. You are not allowed to go to bed without the dishes being done once a day. You're not allowed. It's a non-negotiable. And I have three non-negotiables. Dishes. I have to do the dishes every day, no matter what. I never used to do that. I used to hide them in my cabinets. I can't tell you how many times I've melted, <laughs> I've melted uh, dishes because I've hid them in my oven, dirty dishes, and then forgot and turned the oven on. Yeah. Uh, I used to hide dirty dishes like I had maggots. I used to hide them in the cabinet. It's disgusting. I'm, I'm like, when I'm telling you these things, it's the truth is because I've been there and I was like, I guarantee you a way bigger slob than any of you. Like I was a nightmare disaster. Never did my, I just would buy new clothes. I had clothes up to my waist and, and pass with like bags of trash mixed in like bad, bad do dishes every day, no matter what. For me, the second one is I have to do a load of laundry. We have a family of five, a load of laundry a day. I don't put it away. The, everybody puts their own laundry away, but I, I have to do a load of laundry a day and I have to do a 10 minute tidy up of the hot spots area. So kitchen, living room, like entranceway, 10 minutes. That's it. It might not be perfect. I don't care. I might not even be close to done, but I have to do 10 minute day tidy or else non-negotiable. What are your non-negotiables? And I recommend three and dishes should be one of them. Dishes. Yes. Dishes. So what if you tried that before you decluttered all your dishes, except two, <laughs> which is a technique to try. What if you made a commitment to yourself right now that every day, no matter what you were going to do the dishes and set alarms because you will not remember. You will not remember that this is a priority. You will not remember that this matters. You're going to want to watch say yes to the dress or the bachelor or whatever you normally do. Cause right now you're in the routine of not doing dishes. You've got to create a new habit. You need to set alarms in your phone, get yourself an Alexa and be like, Alexa, remind me every night at 8 PM to do the dishes. No matter what you have no choice, put on your big girl pants, get your butt in the kitchen, girl. I hope you have an Alexa that's going to remind you of that. And then set another Alexa reminder for 8 30 and then maybe nine, make them bully you, remind you because it's important because you're important and you're not doing this for your husband or your family. You're not doing this for me or doing this for you because you deserve to wake up in the morning to a clean kitchen. You deserve that. And that's a gift you're giving to yourself because it's rude it's rude. If this was your best friend's house and you were staying at her house for the night, would you leave those dishes for her in the morning? Would you dirty all those dishes and then leave them for her to clean up in the morning? Of course not. If it was a stranger, you wouldn't do that to that person. You would never do that to another human being because that would be horrible. That would be so rude and mean and disrespectful. Why are you doing it to yourself? You would never treat another human being like that. And yet you're treating yourself like that. And when you shift the mindset to seeing it like that, seeing it differently, seeing the fact that neglecting these things is mean to you, it changes everything. Because now you're not doing it because you have to. You're doing it because you love yourself. 
What? You're doing it because you love yourself. That's a game changer. And that's where this is coming from. And that's the place I want you to be. And I need you to be because uh, just, man, yeah, it's crazy. What about the power bill? <laughs> Listen, where is she? Scarlett, if you paid the electricity bill, you don't need it. Bye. You don't need it. You don't use it for, uh, if, you, if you're not running a business out of your home, then you can't write off any of your electricity bill. If you're running a business out of your home and you're writing off a portion of your utilities and your property tax in your taxes, then I want you to keep it. If you're not, if you're like, what if someday I'm going to start a business cast? No, no, then you, you can't. It doesn't matter. If someday you're going to start a business, you can't claim old bills. So it doesn't matter. It goes shredded immediately. You don't need to keep any of these. None of them. None of them. No reason to keep it. And what if there's a discrepancy and they say I didn't pay it? Well, you have record with your bank that you paid it. You do not have to worry about that. That is just anxiety bullying you. i telling you, you do not need to keep it. <laughs> your Alexa just set your reminder. Good. I want your Alexa to keep to like, oh my gosh, Scarlett. If you do dishes every day, are you wasting electricity? No, you are saving electricity because listen to me, even the dishwasher, if you're saying like the dishwasher is not full yet, are you wasting? It takes hardly any water and electricity to run the dishwasher. If you leave those things for days and days and they're like skunked on and you got to like rewash the same dish three times because it never actually gets clean or now you got to fill a sink and like really do a scrub, that's wasteful and it's wasteful of your time. You're doing the dishes. And if you're like, Cass, I, I, I'm only one person. I can't run a dishwasher once a day. That's fine. Better be full though. You better be like putting the dishes in it. Maybe Scarlett, you don't run it. Maybe you run it the next day, but they're not in your sink. The dishes aren't in your sink and washing dishes by hand doesn't cost you any electricity. So I want you to do your dishes every day. And at the end of the day, you know what? If some of you are going to be like, well, it does cost an extra. I don't care if it's $5 extra a day. You are worth that. You're worth that to wake up in the morning to not having dirty dishes on your counter or in your sink. You wouldn't do that to a stranger. You wouldn't go into a stranger's home and cook a meal and eat off their dishes and then leave the mess for them the next day. It's awful and rude and disrespectful. You would never do that to another person. So don't you dare do that to yourself. You can afford to do your dishes every day. And if you're telling yourself it's a money thing, that is a lie that you're telling yourself to appease the fact that you just don't want to do the dishes. But waiting a day or two or a week is making it harder. You're making more work for yourself. And every day in the meantime, you're dealing with a kitchen that's hard to cook, that's hard to clean, that's hard to like make a sandwich in. Non-negotiable. Tough love. Jenny, can you ask for tough love advice about paper clutter? It's ruling you lately. You need permission to go deep and let go. Yep. Here's what I want you to do, Jenny. If you reach out to like UPS or any, there's shred it. There's companies that do big shreds. They'll even come to you or you can drop off the paper. And for a very small amount of money, they will shred your papers for you. I want you to schedule either a pickup or put in your calendar a day that you're going. Give yourself a week and just start filling clear bags with paper that can go. Old greeting cards can go. Old bills that you've paid that you haven't used for taxes can go. Credit card receipts can go. And you can sit on the floor and you could take a box of paper and you could just go, keep, go, keep, go, keep, go, keep, go, keep, go, keep, go. Pack up the, the go put it in a clear bag, pack up the keep. I don't care. Put it back in that box. You've moved the needle forward. You don't have to organize everything today. You don't have to create homes and filing cabinets and do all that crap. You just have to pick stuff that can leave. That's it. Jenny, you can do this. Set yourself a date. Give yourself a deadline. Get it out. Man, imagine the weight off your back. Jenny, like of just not having to think about the paper anymore. 
And if you can't do it for yourself, what happens if tomorrow you get hit by a bus? Morbid but true. Is it fair to leave all that paperwork for your loved ones to deal with? If you can't do it for yourself, do it for them. But I hope that you love yourself enough to do it for you. And I know this is all extra work and I know you guys are working enough and you're like, I can't possibly add more things to my plate. But this is, go this is an investment in you. You are going to get to a place where your life is now way easier because you've done the work to catch up. And then you just have to keep up. And you, keeping up is the three, the big three, dishes, laundry, 10 minute tidy. Imagine if that's all you had to do. And that is, that, that would be all you would have to do. Sometimes you gotta vacuum, I guess. Meh. Get your kids to do it, get your husband to do it or do it you know, when you feel like it. But if you just, if you were caught up on the clutter, if you had your house and it was a manageable amount of stuff and all you had to do was dishes, one load of laundry and a 10 minute tidy up, what would you do? What would your life feel like? What more could you do with your life? Could you read more, have new hobbies, go out with friends, feel proud of yourself, invite people over, play board games with the neighbors? I don't know. Watch more movies. So many options. Don't burden yourself with managing your mess and clutter you don't even use and don't even really like. It's time to catch up. It's time to work and catch up by getting, pushing the needle forward. Okay, I'm gonna answer two more questions. Family of Parsons, you live in a home with three other adults. You've decluttered everything in the kitchen that's yours, but you can't get anyone else on board. It's always cluttered and it's so hard to cook or do dishes help. Yeah, it's hard. I live with a cricket husband who was really against decluttering for a really long time. And I've helped literally hundreds and hundreds of families in their home declutter. And a lot of people are very reluctant to let go. And so here's something I recommend. It's a tool that you can do with other people that's very effective to build their confidence and their self-love. And this is a non-judging activity. So you say, hey, I wanna do something with you. I wanna do some decluttering with you, but there is zero pressure, zero judgment, and you don't have to let go of anything that you don't want to. You are the boss, you are in control, and you don't have to do anything either than say yes or no. And I know this might feel like this is more work on you. I know, but this is this is about teaching and this is about inspiring and getting someone excited about the process of letting go. So if you live with people who are reluctant, this is what you do. You go into the space and you start holding things up. Do you want to keep this? Do you use this? They're going to say yes. Okay, great. Put it back. What about this? Is this something you use all the time? They're going to say yes. Okay, fine. Grab something else. After a few minutes, they're going to say, actually, that can probably go. Now you're going to be, oh my God, see, you're so good at this. I'm so proud of you. Good job. You put it in the donation box, go to something else. What about this? Can this go? They're going to say, that can say, that. we never shame them for the things that they want to keep, ever. The more you praise for the things that they're going to let go, the more they're feeling confident in their decisions. They're starting to trust themselves because you're reinforcing that they're doing a good job. If they ever say something can go and you think they should keep it, you zip your lip, never second guess someone. You say, good job. I'm so proud of you and move on to the next thing. This is how you teach children. This is how you teach spouses. This is how you teach strangers to really like be confident in their ability to declutter. And the first time around, they may pick like two things that they want to let go of. And that's fine. We praise, praise. And then we just do it again. While you're in the kitchen cooking, you're like, hey, you think we can let this go? They'll be like, yeah, that can go. We'll sneak it out. One more win. Yay, yay, yay. You're going to get there. And then what happens is they start to associate decluttering with pride, praise, and feeling good because every time they've said, yeah, that can go, you have given them praise, told them you're proud of them and told them they've done a good job. So now their brain, instead of associating decluttering with, I'm taking this from me, this is hard, I'm letting go, this is wasteful. Now they associate decluttering with good things. It's psychology up in here, friends. And so this 
is how you train other people to let go. And then they, you don't need to keep praising them. You do this like three, four times. You're going to see they're going to start to now let go on their own. And it's going to continually get easier because you've changed their mindset about decluttering through praise, praise, praise. Okay. We're going to ask one more question. Um, you got this, you guys. I'm, I'm so proud of you. <clears throat> okay. How can you organize your high shelves in the kitchen cabinets? You don't really know what to buy. Ugh, okay, so you're, if you're short, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're zoning your valuable real estate with the things you use every day. And your valuable real estate is anything from waist to eye level. So the bottom shelf in your kitchen cabinets, the top of your counter, the top drawers, and probably your lower cabinets. Those are prime real estate, valuable real estate. Things you use every day have to be stored in there. And if there's anything that you don't use every day, but it's in one of those spots, take it out. The stuff you hardly ever use needs to be at the very top. So how do you organize them? Honestly, you put the things you never use up there that you have to get a chair to get to. So think about serving platters or big things that you're using just at Christmas, roasting pans. If you don't bake all the time, put your baking supplies up there. We don't, you, there's like fancy things that can like come down and make organizing easier. But the best thing you could do, the cheapest thing you could do is really identify the least used things in your home and store those there. And the valuable real estate is only for the things you use multiple times a week. So if you hardly ever use your blender, store it up top. If you hardly ever use, I don't know, whatever it is, store it up top. And declutter, 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 declutter. Get things out so that all your cabinets aren't jammed so full that you have to store your everyday things up top, right? So have less and zone your kitchen based on most used items being at eye or waste level. Okay. Um... I'm so proud of all of you. Last question. Do you need to keep old client contracts, the hard copies? You have a small business. Yeah, I would scan them. I have like a little scanner that's like a zippity doodad scanner. And anytime I do like a photo release or a contract with a client, anytime I'm doing any type of any copyright things, I have to have signed contracts for that. I just scan them and dump them in a folder that's like signed contracts. Don't need to keep the paper copies at all. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm I'm proud of you. I want you today, today, please listen. It's 3 p.m. Eastern time to fill a bag or a box to push the needle forward and get it out of your home. Take it, take it to the trash can or take it to your trunk or put it out on your porch, put it on the balcony. You're getting it out of your house. Even if you're not taking it all the way to a donation center, I don't care. You're pushing the needle forward today and you're not sorting and you're not making a mess. You're just looking for things that you can confidently say, I don't need this. And then praise yourself for being brave enough to do that. Everything you say this can go, feel good. Feel like this is self-love. I'm more important than you, extra stupid spatula. Or that frying pan that the handle's always loose and broken and I never use it. Or those, that yarn that I tell myself I was going to knit and I've never used it. Bye. Bye. I'm more important. This feels so good to put myself first. You deserve a beautiful home that's clean and clutter-free and stays tidy. You deserve a home that you are proud of. And the way to get there is right now to take action and put yourself first, to be selfish and no longer let the stuff control you. You ready? I want to see some bosses up in here. Okay. Love you guys so, so much. If any of you are a part of the Take Your House Back, I'm going to see you tomorrow for the All Day Declutter. It starts at 9 a.m. Eastern, and I'm going to be working in the kitchen with you. If you're not part of that, no worries. You got this. This weekend, you deserve to put yourself and your home first, and I'll see you guys next time.